Hello and welcome to a new Blender developer sneak peek. My name is Thomas Beck and I present you in this episode many improvements in the UI, the viewport, the VSE, the file browser and the grease pencil section. All of those found its way into the soon to be released Blender version 2.75. If you'd like to support me and make sure that more videos are created more frequently, then use the Amazon link in the video description to buy my German Blender book or buy other stuff from Amazon with the link. By the way, thanks so much for all those amazing reviews on Amazon, Blender Nation and in the forums. It's amazing to see that it was worth all the hard work. And if you'd like to translate it in English, please contact me. But now I wish you a lot of joy with the following sneak peek. Let's come to two really great features. Um, the first one is the th thumbnails feature and the second one is the font preview feature. The thumbnails feature is very easy to explain. Just hit uh, on uh, open new texture button and then you have those uh, previews here by clicking there and then there is the thumbnail size and thumbnail size is as you would imagine probably tiny small normal and large and displays your thumbnails in different sizes as you can see here so that's very cool and very helpful but I'm really happy to present you the next feature and that is the font preview because that is something that I finalized and started in my skiing holidays. So let's just add a text and give them a font. And that is exactly where you started in, your, in the last version. There you have all your fonts and you don't know anything about uh, how they look before you actually select them. So you would select it, it's not that what you wanted, then select another one and so on. But now there is a much easier feature and that is the thumbnail button here. Then you can see everything is rendered on the fly and we got those tiny, small, normal and large thumbnail size as well. So you could very easily take it the font you like and have fun with it. Okay, so that concludes the file browser section uh, already. Let's now look at a cool viewport improvement. That's the depth of field um, high quality checkbox. And maybe you have used it already, uh, but if not, here is how you use it. This is the shading tab in the viewport. There you have a depth of field uh, checkbox right uh, above the ambient occlusion checkbox. And when you enable it and you look through the camera, then you have in the viewport a new high quality checkbox. And let's first um, in enable, uh, disable it to see what it's like when you uh, use the normal calculation. And then you can see that I've got a number of 0 0.3 now and an f-stop of 0 0.3 here. That's the viewport f-stop and that's the f-stop that the actual camera uses when you render it. So let's just hit preview rendering, uh, enable preview rendering and you see that this um, depth of field has nothing to do with the viewport depth of field because in the viewport everything is blurry here and there and when you uh, enable the um, real-time renderer then you see this is in focus and there it starts to get blurry but it's not at uh, it's not that blurry but when you enable the high quality checkbox then you see that the uh, viewport depth of field is exactly the same or mostly the same as in the real-time renderer. So if you'd like to have uh, a result that is very similar to your final renderer, then use the high quality checkbox here. It's more involved, so uh, if you enable it, then it will be much more uh, computing intensive, but it's really much better. Let's now look at two new features in the VSE. And to understand those features, I'd like to shortly explain what proxies are, because those are tangling the proxies. 
And proxies are really helpful because pro proxies uh, are shrunk down versions of your original clips. So for example, I've got a clip here where dust is raising or let's look at some smoke that is raising here. And all those strips are, are high resolution strips. So when I layer them on top and do some alpha compositing and so on, then they are slow. So when you are animating it, then you see that the frames per second up there are six point something. And that is really slow. And when you get mu music and uh, like to have some dynamic cut cuts in there, then you really can't judge if this cut is working or not if you have not your original frame rate up there. And therefore, and because we are moving with a light speed to 4K and 4K video is even more process processor intensive and I've got a i7 with plenty gigs of RAM. Um, because of that, there exists the proxy rendering option and proxies are a really cool thing. They shrink down your video. They calculate a lower resolution version like 50% resolution, for example. And when you uh, like to enable that and you have it like it was before, then it is done per strip. Per strip was the only option that was uh, available before with some proxy custom directories. And let's now just enable per strip and look what it does. So first of all, we like to prepare every proxy uh, every strip with 50% proxies. And um, we, we'd like to rebuild those proxies because if you don't enable, uh, don't click on rebuild, then no proxy is built. And when we look at those strips, then you see that some of those strips lie in the folder ash and some lie in the folder smokes or smoke. And when we look now in this uh, folders here, then you can see that in Ash there is a BL proxy folder now with our two movies, our two Ash movies. And in the smoke uh, folder, there is a, a BL proxy folder too with the Ash smoke proxy. As you can see, there is a proxy in 50% resolution now. And that is all nice, but the problem is when you have several folders that are lying across your file hierarchy, then all those BL proxies are cluttering your complete uh, file system. And therefore, there is now a new option. But before I show you the new option, I'd like to show you what uh, we have done with the proxy setting now, because now uh, you, maybe you remember we had so uh, f six or seven frames per second, but now when you uh, set those display to proxy, then you see that even if I'm layering four on top, four uh, strips on top, then everything is fluent and nice and you could judge if your uh, cuttings work, your cuts work. And now, Let's come to the new option and that is the project option. And when you set this to project, then you have one directory and you see that every strip that has proxies enabled is automatically changed to project to the project setting. And in this uh, project directory, every strip, every strip's proxy is laid down. So if you now say rebuild proxy and timecode indices and we're um, browsing to our project proxies, then you'll see, oh, sorry, I should have selected all of those, all of the strips, and then say rebuild proxy. Then you'll see that every proxy for every strip is generated in the project proxies directory, as I specified here. And that is very important because then you only have to uh, back up, for example, this folder to have all your proxies and it's not cluttering your file system anymore. So that's the first uh, feature for the VSE. And the next one is uh, very helpful if you have a render farm or you, you're using a render farm and like to import image sequences. And image sequences have always the, or renderings in general, have always the problem that they are never 
finished in time. So for example, here we got an image sequence that is in progress and you see it rendered to 541. And then we had some test frames at the end if that is working, yeah, it did. And that was the 692 PNG. And when you have your um, your colleagues that like to cut something or to, they like, like to uh, arrange all those sequences already, then you would you don't want to, to have the following thing. Let me just disable it because you wouldn't see the effect that it has otherwise. That is the incomplete strip. And as you can see, it's just one second or so. All those rendered frames are the previous ones, those that are the, in the range of uh, 500 and 40 and those are the uh, frames that are later rendered the 692 but you'd like to have all those frames that are missing in there too and therefore there is a new use placeholders checkbox here and when you do that then blender recognizes that there is there are some missing frames between those two values and if you import those then you see that many empty frames are inserted. And that is the best what you can do for your uh, cutter, because then every uh, frame that is missing is still there. He can cut everything that he, li that he likes. But when those frames are back from the farm, then they are uh, on the next load are um, added just in the, uh, they are replacing the missing frames, so to say. So it's not needed what I do now to uh, reload your complete clip. That's just to show you that when the frames are ready, that the length of those two strips is completely equal. So that's a really easy and helpful addition for the um, cutting department, I think. And here in the studio, we were going crazy about this because that was giving us Hedechi every time we did some uh, longer movie. So thanks, Anthony, for that. And that was the that were the two, two new features. As usual, the UI got some improvements and changes as well. And first of all, maybe you've used that, maybe not. Um, in Blender, you used to change values by hovering over with your mouse over a um, value field, for example, and then using your Alt key and your mouse wheel, rolling on your mouse wheel to change the values. But not anymore. It's now do, uh, done via holding control and then uh, uh, changing your mouse wheel, rolling up or down, as you can see here. And um, that has been changed because Blender is now capable of multi-object value editing. And that is really cool. And uh, let me just demonstrate it on those three uh, objects here. So as you maybe know, when you change now the location here, then the last change uh, last selected object is changed. You can see that on the uh, outline here that is lighter orange as this one. And this object is the active object. Those are all selected objects, but this one is the active. And when you change now the location, then you see that I was right, only this one is changed. But when you hold Alt now, while uh, doing this uh, change, then you can see that everything is changing. And not, on, not only that, this uh, color is indicating in blue that all those objects are changed. You can do that with every value you, you see and you like to. And as you can see, that works perfect. So that's really amazing and helps very much. But there is more because you can do that not only with those transform values and all those values here, you can do that with modifier values too. So if every one of those has the same modifiers, you can ensure that by uh, hitting Ctrl and L 
and saying I'd like to have the modifiers linked then all those modifiers are copied. The name is not quite clear, but it's uh, doing a copy, a modifier copy. And when you now uh, use this ratio slider to, um, to reduce the um, amount of polygons on Suzanne, then you see that you always um, uh, changing only the Suzanne. But when you hold Alt, uh, Alt by uh, doing this, then you can see that the amount of vertices or um, the amount of polygons is reduced in every object, every selected object. So that works really well and even with subdivision surface. So with every setting you have here, uh, you can do that. So that was the multi-object value changing. Then there is the panel track collapse. Um, when you have many panels open, then maybe you know already that you can click on when you only want to see the grease pencil then you can click on this via holding by holding control and everyone is collapsed but if you'd like to do this a bit bit uh, faster and every uh, and collapse every panel then you can just hold down your left mouse button and track down so like this and every panel is collapsed. So that is working for uh, for expanding as well. So if you'd like to expand all those, then you can do that exactly the same. Then there is a new v view online manual shortcut by, um, by holding down Alt and F1. So, for example, when you like to see what is the ambient occlusion doing, then you can just hold down Alt plus F1. Let's just do that and see if that works. Just hover over it, over the uh, checkbox, do an Alt F1. And as you can see here, it's now at ambient occlusion. It opened the browser window with ambient occlusion. And that is exactly what it should do. Then there are more eyedroppers. So everywhere where you can enter an object, there is now an eyedropper. Apart from that, and let me now just disable the matcap shading. Apart from that, there is now a material reorder possibility. But to show you what that does and what you should be aware of, let me just disable those modifiers and, um, and enable a wireframe modifier. So, this material here is the material, let me just use the viewport color, this material is the material that is used basically. But if you'd like to have the material offset 1 or offset 2, then you see that those materials, material offset 1 or material offset 2 is used. But when you now change the order of the materials and you refresh this material offset, then you see that this material is now uh, taken. So please be aware when you um, change the material slot order, then all assigned materials are changed as well. So when you use an offset of, of one, then this slot is the offset, not the uh, material that is in the slot. And if you are aware of that, then you won't be um, you won't be disappointed by that feature. But please be aware. Uh, the next thing is the uh, quad view, and let's just switch to that. And that is a really um, a simple feature. That one is the right auto view. When you have pressed numpad three, then you would be in right auto view as well. When you um, hold down control and, and press down uh, numpad 3, then you would switch to the opposite direction. And that is exactly what is doable now via numpad 9. So if you are in one of those views and hit one, numpad 9, then you switch to the opposite direction, as you can see here. So that was everything for the U UI. And now let's look at some small crease pencil features, but helpful ones. 
and then this sneak peek is over again. After the massive overhaul of the crease pencil feature in the last releases, this release contains only a few but cool additions. And so let's first of all uh, do a little drawing. Let's do it a pinkish one. Let's do a pinkish one and draw those beautiful, beautiful spirals. So that's simply beautiful. And uh, that's the second layer and the second layer will be greenish, I think. And uh, there I'll create an awesome flower, a photorealistic flower. Damn, that's beautiful. And now let's have a third layer in blue and every uh, flower needs some rain. So we are doing a bit of rain. Yeah, mouse painting is really awesome, I see. Um, so that's our cloud. And now we are switching to the uh, grease pencil editing. And that uh, you can do that by uh, holding down D and tabbing. And then you can see the first edition. There is the G pencil stroke editing uh, signal up there. So you can see I'm now editing my strokes, for example, via the proportional editing tool. Then you can make every uh, thing, every drawing even more ugly. Um, and now when you'd like to edit only this uh, layer here, then you'd like to um, to delete all the other layers maybe, uh, to, to hide all those other layers maybe. And that you can do by just hitting H. So hitting H will hide this layer. If you select this one, uh, this one and hitting H, then this will hide uh, the layer as well. And Alt H will bring it back just like in the 3D view. And when you like to have every layer hidden except the currently selected layer, then you would uh, just hit Shift and H, and then you can uh, edit or uh, distort or whatever you like um, your layer. And via Alt H, all those other layers are back again. So that concludes the um, sneak peek for this time. I'm uh, preparing to two more, I think, for uh, next week. Uh, and that should be the week where Blender 2.75 is released. So everything is finished and final. Um, I hope that you had joy watching this sneak peek. Please subscribe and share it so uh, many people know of the new features. My name is Thomas Beck and happy planning.